Star Wars spin-off Rogue One is out in cinemas very soon, but not as soon as the Rogue One DLC for Star Wars Battlefront, which features the exotic tropical planet of Scarif and new heroes Jin Erso and Orson Krennic. We've played it, and therefore we've had a sneaky preview of a few cool things to keep an eye out for when you watch the movie. Check them out in the following new gameplay from a pre-release version of the DLC, which EA invited us to play on PS4. Soon. Empress closest confidant. Rogue One's brand new baddie, Orson Krennic, is an Imperial officer. He's played by Ben Mendelsohn in the movie, and let me just say, his cape game is on point. It's the hottest trend for Winter 15 BBY. Yes, that is officially the nerdiest joke we've ever made on Outside Xbox, and that's basically all we do. Krennic's the hero character for the Imperial baddies in this DLC, and his main deal, apart from presumably paying enormous dry cleaning bills to keep his outfit crispy white, is toting his revolver style blaster here. As you can see from the reticle, this is the Star Wars equivalent of a cowboy six shooter, and it's apparently Krennic's actual signature weapon in the film, too, so you can murder rebels safe in the knowledge that you're not doing anything that breaks the cannon. We'll no doubt see it in action at some point or other during the movie. Let's just hope Krennic handles it better than we do, otherwise it'll be a pretty short action sequence. Oh, and what does an energy weapon need with a revolving chamber, you might ask? That's the kind of fool question that gets you lasered, this Battlefront DLC replies. Best not to ask why a Star Wars turbo laser needs to be turbocharged, either. One of Krennic's abilities is spawning this little black R2-D2 look-alike astromech droid that pops a bubble shield for him on the battlefield. With a name like a chess move or a 1990s R&B group, the droid is properly called C2B5, but to us he'll always be goth R2-D2. And much like R2-D2 and BB-8 before him, he somehow doesn't struggle at all with trundling around on sand. Surely that would gum up his little wheels, something rotten. We have many questions regarding C2B5's appearance as one of Krennic's hero powers. Does this mean he'll be Krennic's little buddy in the movie? How will that jive with Krennic's otherwise menacing deal if he's being followed around by an adorable R2 clone? Could the Death Star plans be stored inside his little pedal bin chassis, mirroring R2-D2's role in the original film? And most importantly, can we have one? We cannot let them through the shield gate. Like the Death Star DLC's Battle Station mode, the Rogue One DLC's Infiltration mode is a three-phase match that starts with a pitched space battle. It's here that, for the first time, we get more than a glimpse at the shield gate. The planet of Scarif is entirely enclosed in an enormous deflector shield, and the only access in and out is via this unnecessarily sphinctery shield gate. Guaranteed, someone in the movie is going to get exploded by that thing as it closes. Another victim of our superior training. Rogue One sees the Rebels continuing to work their way through the alphabet with Starfighter names, debuting the new U-Wing, which is a little too close to U-Bend for our liking. Built specifically for the Rogue One movie, the first time we'll properly see it in action is this DLC, most prominently during the initial space battle sequence. The Rebels are trying to sneak these ships through the shield gate without getting shot down by TIE fighters or crashing embarrassingly into space junk. The ship itself is designed as troop transport to get the rebel forces onto the ground in Scarif. And if you're wondering, it's called a U-Wing because when it lands, its wings pivot forward to make a U-shape. Given that Rogue One is set years before the original films and we never see them again, presumably U-Wings were decommissioned because even in a successful mission, usually only 1 in 12 survives the mad dash to the shield gate. Not only is Krennic packing the coolest hardware and the most fashionable threads, he also gets these imposing death troopers as his hero bodyguards. Choose to play as one and you'll be a good foot or two taller than everyone else on the battlefield and clad in jet black armour. Obviously that makes you an easier target, so to counteract that, these guys are total badasses who carry rapid fire blasters, which the woefully underfunded Rebellion probably can't even afford. I mean, sure, Jin Erso is cool and all, but is it bad to be Team Imperial for this movie? Just this one. The Rogue One DLC also features the Battlefront debut of a new flavour of Imperial Stormtrooper, the Shore Trooper. These guys are identifiable by their sandy-coloured armour and the fact that they have a nifty visor built into their helmet to keep the sun out of their eyes when they're lazing, I mean, patrolling on the beach. They look pretty neat, though really we were hoping for a regular Stormtrooper in Hawaiian print board shorts and a shark tooth necklace. Hey, they made that Ewok spin-off movie, anything could happen. 
One thing that probably won't feature in the movie, but is pretty cool regardless, is the new grenade type that comes with the DLC, the Sonic Imploder. A modified version of the Thermal Imploder power-up, the Sonic Imploder Star Card is essentially a wide radius stun grenade that temporarily blinds enemies and reduces their armour. The effect is extremely short-lived, but can make a big difference if you're assaulting an objective and there are multiple enemies lurking around. It will also make a big difference if you accidentally get caught in your own Sonic Implosion. Though not in the way you were probably intending. So that was a quick look at the new Rogue One DLC for Star Wars Battlefront set on the planet of Scarif. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time, when I will almost certainly be trying to make wearing a cape a thing again.